way the Colorado River made Grand Canyon. Rivers don't flow uphill. They would have had to flow uphill for millions of years to cut the groove deep enough to flow downhill. They simply don't do that. Um, this geologic column is on display at many universities in almost every earth science textbook. This is really the way they, th this is their Bible. This is their paradigm, their worldview. Everything's interpreted based upon this geologic column. I was speaking in uh, South Dakota, and I went to the School of Mines where they have the large uh, dinosaur display there. And the guy was showing us around, and he said, now ladies and gentlemen, these rock layers over here in the geologic column are about 70 million years old. My daughter was 12. She raised her hand. She said, how do you tell the age of the rock layers? And he said, well, we tell the age of the layers by the types of fossils they contain. They're called index fossils. She said, thank you, sir. We walked around the other side of this dinosaur. We're standing on the other side, and the guy said, now, look, folks, these bones right here are about 100 million years old. My daughter raised her hand again. She said, how do you tell the age of the fossils? He said, well, we tell the age of the fossils by which layer they come from. She said, sir, when you were standing over there, you told me you knew the age of the layers by the fossils, and now you're telling me you know the age of the fossils by the layers. She said, isn't that circular reasoning? I mean, a 12-year-old can figure it out. It is classic circular reasoning. And that's exactly how they tell the age of these fossils and these rock layers. Let's see what the evolutionists themselves say about the geologic column and circular reasoning. Here's a textbook, Lenko Biology 94 edition, on page 306. The layers of rock can be dated by the types of fossils they contain. You follow that? Very next page. Scientists have determined the relative times of appearance and disappearance of many kinds of organisms from the locations of their fossils in the sedimentary rock layers. <laughs> they're dating the fossils by the rocks, and on the next page before, they were dating the rocks by the fossils. Here's a quote. The intelligent layman has long suspected circular reasoning in the use of rocks to date fossils and fossils to date rocks. The geologist has never bothered to think of a good reply, feeling the explanations are not worth the trouble as long as the work brings results. German, American Journal of Science, 1976. You can check that out for yourself. Ever since William Smith, at the beginning of the 19th century, fossils have been, and still are, the best and most accurate method of dating and correlating the rocks in which they occur. Apart from very modern examples, which really are archaeology, I can think of no cases of radioactive decay being used to date fossils. They don't date those fossils by carbon dating, potassium argon dating, rubidium strontium dating, lead 208, lead 206, uranium 235, uranium 238. They date them by the position they're found in the rock layers. Paleontologists cannot operate this way. There is no simple way to look at a fossil and say how old it is unless you know the age of the rocks it comes from. And this poses something of a problem. If we date the rock by their fossil, how can we then turn around and talk about patterns of evolutionary change through time in the fossil record? Niles Eldridge, American Museum of Natural History, one of the biggest evolutionists there is. The rocks do date the fossils, but the fossils date the rocks more accurately. <laughs> Photography you cannot avoid this kind of reasoning if it insists on using only temporal concepts because circularity is inherent. Inherent in the derivation of time scales. American Journal of Science again. Circular, circular reasoning is the all is the evolutionary scale is based on. The charge of circular reasoning in stratigraphy can be handled in several ways. It can be ignored as not the proper concern of the public. In other words, it's none of your business. It can be denied by calling down the law of evolution. It can be admitted as a common practice, or it can be avoided by pragmatic reasoning. It ought to be admitted as a common practice. It's all based on circular reasoning. Are the authorities maintaining, on the one hand, that evolution is documented by geology, and on the other, that geology is documented by evolution? Isn't this a circular argument? Biologists, help. Good name for the article. They need some help. It's all based on circular reasoning, folks. It cannot be denied that from a strictly philosophical standpoint, geologists are here arguing in the circle. The success of organisms has been determined by a study of their remains embedded in the rocks. And the relative ages of the rocks are determined by the remains of the organisms they contain. That's how it's done, folks. Encyclopedia Britannica. These aren't creationist uh, publications. This geologic column contains all sorts of different rock layers. We have limestone, sandstone, conglomerate, shale, etc. And they're scattered all through there. For instance, here we have limestone, limestone, limestone. If I handed a geologist a piece of limestone and said, how old is it? There is only one possible way he could tell, the age of the limestone. I mean, how do you tell the difference between 
100 million year old Jurassic limestone and 600 million year old Cambrian limestone. It's limestone and it's found all through the geologic column. How do you tell the age of this limestone? There's only one way it can be done by the index fossils. They're digging the rocks by the fossils. So if they say they have found the geologic column in 26 locations, what she really means is they have found certain fossils in those 26 locations. That's how it was determined. And I would say in a worldwide flood in the days of Noah, you would find all sorts of fossils in all sorts of places. Radiometric dating would not have been feasible if the geologic column had not been erected first. Now what on earth do you mean by that, Mr. O'Rourke? You can't date things by, by radiometric dating unless you know the approximate age they come from. Go to any laboratory where they do carbon dating. I challenge you to do this. Take in a sample and ask them, would you please carbon date this? Get something like charcoal that's easy to, easier to carbon date and they will make you fill out several pages of papers telling where did you find it, what fossils were associated with it, how old do you think it is. Look, carbon dating is not a blind test. They go into this very prime looking for a particular age, which is why the frozen dinosaur bones that were found in Antarctica were not carbon dated. They would have given some number, much less than the 70 million they're looking for. They'll say, well, because carbon dating only goes to 50,000 years. Well, we'll talk more about that later. I'll show you how carbon dating really works, if you'd like to know. Here's an index fossil from a textbook. This is a trilobite. It's an index fossil. If you find a trilobite in a rock layer, the rock layer was probably formed 500 million years ago. They date the layers by the fossils. That's how it's done universally. All this happened in the early 1800s for lots of political and scientific reasons, I'm sure. But we can talk about the politics behind this if you like. But Here's a petrified uh, a fossil of a human shoe print with a, where a man stepped on a trilobite. William Meister found it in 1968. This is from Reader's Digest and Histories of Then Explained, page 38. Another view of it. Joint trilobite, uh, larger than that. It's all based on index fossils. Uh, let me see here. If you took this rock to any university and said, how old is this rock? They would say, oh, this is easy. This contains an index fossil. It's called a graptolite. And the graptolite is the index fossil for 410 million year old rock. It is the New York State fossil. Look it up in the encyclopedia, graptolites. Automatically it'll say 410 million years old. That's what's been done for the last 150 years. Graptolites are one of the index fossils. But in 1993 they discovered graptolites are still alive in the South Pacific. First magazine, September 93. Well, if they're still alive, maybe they could be found in any rock layer. Hmm? There's indication there are some trilobites still alive in the deep Peruvian trench. Some of the deep research.